account, but we'll let okay. you know as soon as it's up. Okay, we're live now. Good. Good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to Cato Parish Economic Development Committee meeting for 10 for uh, March 10th, 2021. Uh, Mr. Clerk, can you give a roll call for the membership? Commissioner Cawthorn. Present. Commissioner Gage Watts. Commissioner Atkins. Here. Commissioner John. Commissioner Burrell. I, I see you, Commissioner Burrell, but I didn't hear you. Here. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Johnson. Present. Thank you very much. You have four of six members present, and that is a quorum. Okay, good. I, I will ask that uh, Commissioner Burrell lead us in an invocation. And uh, Commissioner John Atkins, do you pledge of allegiance for us? Hey, bow your heads, please. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. Bless us, O oh Lord. We, we know that we don't deserve it. But through your grace, you are still blessing us. Bless us, O oh Lord, that we do have a, a good meeting that we can carry out the, the work of the people of Caddo Parish. All these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, please join me in standing, facing the flag, and placing your hand over your heart and reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, the Pledge of Allegiance to the, the flag, flag, the United States, United States of America, America, and to the Republic, for which it one nation, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible visible, liberty, and liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Burrell and Commissioner Atkins. Yes, sir. Uh, now we would have um, agenda additions. We do have one agenda addition. It's an ITEP application for uh, Inferno Manufacturing. Uh, I think several of the members of this committee are familiar with this entity. Uh, I think it was a year ago we approved an application form that they want to put another application before us. Uh, the attachment kind of gives you the number of jobs to be created, uh, the abatement amount, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can review that at this time, but I will entertain a motion for um, adding this to the agenda. So move. Second, it's been properly moved. And second, uh, moved by Commissioner Burrell, uh, second by the chair. Uh, clerk, um, roll call vote. Oh, well, if we could, uh, did you want to open a public hearing for it? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. And then we'll, yeah. and then after the public hearing, we'll take a vote. Okay. Okay. Um, now that, we open up. That okay, number, go ahead, go ahead. that number, should anybody want to call in to make a comment for or against expanding the agenda to include uh, the Inferno ITEP application discussion? Um, somebody can call 318 226 6596. Again, that number is 318. 226-6596, should somebody want to speak for or against expanding the agenda? Okay. Did you want to allow about 30 seconds? Uh, we do another 30 seconds. See if yeah. we have anyone. No problem. Just want to check and see how long you wanted to give them. Point, point of information, please, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I'm somewhat familiar with ITAP, uh, uh, but would it be uh, uh, inappropriate to kind of give me a little, little uh, uh, update on it, on what it does and, and how, how we use it? Well, let's get it added to the agenda, and then we can have that on the discussion okay, when it becomes an agenda item. Okay. Okay. At Let's this point, ahead, at this point, it looks like we have not received any phone calls, and uh, uh, we've allowed a minute for uh, any calls to come in. Okay. Roll call vote for the addition. Okay. Um, let's see, Commissioner Cawthorn. Yes. Commissioner Gage Watts. Commissioner Atkins. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you, Commissioner Gage. Once I didn't see you join. Uh, Commissioner Young. Commissioner Burrell. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. 
Okay, that motion carries with five of six. And that brings us to 4.2, which is a motion to approve consideration of items under Louisiana Revised Statutes 42, 42.17.1 um, to approve the agenda today. Move to approve. Second. It's been uh, approved, it's been uh, moved by Commissioner Johnson, I think it is, and second by Commissioner Barrell. Uh, we, we do this by acclamation, we need a roll call vote. You can do it by acclamation as long as as long as we know there's no objections. Okay, any objections? Okay, moved by acclamation. Thank you very much. And then um, the at this point is where I just need to notify you your certificate of teleconference is attached, but no action is required. And that brings us to public comments. Um, public comments, again, uh, we are open to receiving electronic public comments or callers are welcome to call in. That phone number, should somebody want to call in for public comments, which will be limited to three minutes per caller, uh, are 318-226-6596. Again, that number, 318-226-6596. Um, we have not received any electronic communications on today's agenda. Okay. We'll give you 30 seconds to see if that's a call in. Okay. Okay, at this time, there's no callers. All right. Next agenda like item. Proceed to new business. Yes, sir. All right. Our first item under new business is 6.1. It's discussing the Bayou Classic. And, and I'll just add the, the line for the agenda. We'll do the Bayou Classic, then we'll do the proposal from LSU, and then we'll add the ITEP application for Inferno as the third item. And, so, and if I could, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, as soon as I said there were no callers on the line, a caller called in. Um, do, you wanna, uh, do you wanna take that call? Yes, go ahead. Okay, one moment. Michelle, could you connect the caller if they're still on the line? I think they hung up. Okay, thank you for trying. All righty. So now we're open up uh, discussion for the Bayou Classic. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to actually yield this to uh, President Commissioner uh, Lyndon Johnson. He's been on the ground with the formulation of the Bayou Classic game uh, since its infancy. And I'm going to let him outline where they at, what's the ask, what's the request, and et cetera. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you know, I do work with the sports commission, I'm the parish representative for that. Um, the Bayou Classic will be here April the 17th. That's the game date. Um, the Bayou Classic activities will start um, that Friday, uh, the 16th, uh, going into the 17th. And we're looking at people coming in town on the 15th, that Thursday night, uh, spending Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, and leaving out Sunday. Um, there are some restrictions to what we can do um, based upon COVID, but uh, some of the things that are planned is a uh, pregame reception that would be invitation only. Uh, there is what's going to be called Fan Fest area, which will be down at Festival Plaza. Uh, there is a game um, between Grandma State University and Southern University. Uh, the city is asking through the sports commission uh, for fifty thousand dollars. <throat> um, the sports commission is the uh, fiscal agent for the uh, activities. Um, the city of Shreveport is the host. Um, we will be a sponsor if we go in at the fifty thousand, a major sponsor. Um, the city of Bossier and Bossier Police Jury. Um, the police jury, I think, has already uh, moved and passed on their request, and the city of Bossier is um, voting, I think it's next week, on their request. Um, the game is, you know, uh, one of the largest events in Louisiana. 
Uh, this year, it, it will be coming to Shreveport. Um, right now, the stadium capacity, um, based on the, the latest numbers, is 25,000. Uh, right now, they're only selling about 125 because they don't want to. Uh, the, they don't want the governor to come back and say, "Well, we might go into a, a different phase." But uh, that will then re open up other tickets, the other 125, so that um, by the time of the game, we'll be at the 25,000 capacity. Um, if there's any questions, I can ask answer those. Um, I think we also have uh, Kelly Wells on the call and Stacy Brown as well. If there's a question that I can't answer. Okay. Uh, at this point in time, does does uh, Kelly, uh, Ms. Brown, want to make any comments uh, as an advocate for the uh, sponsorship? Hi, sorry, I'm kind of in my car traveling too. Um, just wanted to be here to answer any questions that you might have. We're really excited about hosting this fantastic event in Shreveport Bossier. It will definitely have a tremendous economic impact for our community. So at the 12-5, um, we're looking at probably a little over a $2 million economic impact. And at the 25,000, about a $4 million economic impact. Um, the city and, and others are working very hard to have several ancillary events to make sure that we're getting people out and about in our community and spending as much money as possible uh, to create that economic impact. And I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have and, and Kelly is available as well. Okay, thank you, Stacey. Uh, Kelly, you wanna make comments at this point? Yes, sir, Commissioner Cawthorn. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity when we started the Sports Commission, including the Cattle Commission uh, over 10 years ago. Uh, this was kind of on a bucket list item that we felt like you know we would love to have one day uh new orleans you know is saddened that they're not able to host it but it like stacy mentioned and and commissioner johnson it's a phenomenal opportunity um really to to kick off you know it has been a little bit tricky leading up to this point you know the governor's announcement last week really was a game changer because it really uh, for outdoor events especially sporting events it's really got us to the point from you know, the 25 to 50%. And so like with Festival Plaza, uh, Commissioner Johnson mentioning the Fan Fest, uh, before the announcement last week, we were looking at about people without alcohol. Uh, now we're looking with the new uh, mandates, uh, about 6,000 people. So, you know, the Bayou Classic down in, in New Orleans, I think the last year that they played, and besides it being nationally televised on NBC Sports this year, um, the bike classic isn't just about a sporting event. You know, the game, I think, had about 54,000 people at the Superdome. Of course, uh, you know, the Battle of the Bands at this point is not able to take pay place because the SWAC has uh, requested that the bands only perform at home games. Uh, we're still watching that um, to see if there could be some changes from that end. But while there was only 54,000 people at the game in New Orleans, uh, they estimated about 150,000 people were in town throughout the New Orleans uh, downtown community throughout that weekend. So having all these ancillary events is going to be really key and uh, in bringing in the numbers. But like the SWAC, the two schools, uh, and all of our entities involved, Mr. Kirk, look like you've frozen up. Yeah, it looks like he got, he uh, accidentally muted. He's talking again. It looks like he's on mute. He's, he's muted. I've alerted him. It looks okay. like he did it. There we go. There you go. Okay. So I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. I think with the announcement last week, uh, you know, it's going to be, we have not in 20 years that I've been doing this, have had any other event that two days before the announcement of, you know, the official announcement of the game moving here, all of our hotels in the Streetport Bossier area were sold out. And so, um, you know, I think with the, uh, you know, the battle of the bands and the bands are a big part of every uh, football team. But, you know, especially with these two schools and just the legendary bands that they both have, uh, making the announcement a little while back uh, that the battle of bands was not taking place. Uh, it, it hurt, you know, going from a sold out city, uh, we're not about 84 percent hotel occupancy. Freezing up. Yeah, he must be. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. 
so we're very supportive of this uh, request, and and I think the community is doing a phenomenal job. It's it's taking a little bit longer than possible, but uh, we appreciate you, the Cattle Commission, uh, looking at this request. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Wells. Uh, I want to also request that uh, everyone, <clears throat> well, I won't assume that everyone knows anything, but the economic impact, if Ms. Brown has, has uh, comp uh, compiled that, uh, can she submit a copy of us to the commission just for public record? Okay. Okay, now I see a few hands raised. Uh, Attorney Frazier was raised first and then we'll entertain Commissioner Atkins. Um, yes, Commissioner, I would just like to request if there is a uh, sponsorship package that goes along with the request, if somebody could um, send a copy of it to me. Uh, this is Stacy. The sponsorship packages are being finalized right now, um, but it'll include things like some tickets to the game, uh, obviously a notation of your sponsorship, not only on the website, but signage at the door. Um, so it'll be in a package. Okay, well, it, when that's been finalized, just send it to me um, for preparation of any agreement that may be reached. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Frazier. Uh, Commissioner Atkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, um, Stacy had me at uh, $2 million to $4 million in economic impact. Uh, this is the type of project we want to support. It's the type of economic return we want to see on our on our economic development investments. So uh, I'm all for this project. You know, I, I believe those numbers. Uh, I know how many people will come in to see that game and to participate in the activities. So I think this is something that we certainly want to want to support. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we can vote now. Then. Oh, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Uh, Commissioner Burrell. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I didn't know that y'all thought that much of it. This, this is my birthday weekend, so I didn't know y'all gonna have that kind of party for me. Mm -hmm. Mine is on the 18th, <laughs> so, uh, so I guess we'll be partying all weekend. Uh, my question, uh, uh, we'll go back as a clarification. You said uh, Bossier Parish has already made their appropriation of the 50000 or or is that a, a different amount than what we are being requested for? That's a different amount. Okay, how much was requested from Bossier Parish? Uh, 15,000. And the city? Bossier City, 15,000. Okay, so 30,000 between the two. All right. Um, on your fan fest, um, what, what would that in include since you're having it down on the riverfront? It's gonna be like a mini festival. Um, should have vendors, entertainment, uh, things of that sort. Okay. All right. All right. Well, those are the basic two questions I had. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Barrett, similar to what they do in New Orleans, where they do it down by the uh, high and parts of uh, Padres and uh, Loyola Street. So that, that, <laughs> that's, it, it mirrors that concept. Yeah. And you did say that the bands will not uh, perform. We didn't say. Oh, okay. All right. I thought they said that that um, that they that what, what was that that only perform at, at home games or something? That was the swag ruling when the season first started. That only the home band would perform, and that's only at a home game. When they go to a neutral site, uh, neither band would be there. But uh, that is having some discussion right now within the swag uh, organization. So we don't know yet. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Burrell. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Yes, I just also want to say, too, that um, this is not the first time that Gramlin and Southern has played in Shreveport. Um, back in 1973, uh, Gramlin played Southern here. It was the first time that they played at a neutral site. Uh, the attendance at that game was 40,000, uh, which led to the game being hijacked to New Orleans. Uh, and so from that uh, meager uh, starting of 40,000 in attendance at a neutral site, ended up now being the multi-million dollar Bayou Classic um, that we're getting a second opportunity to have again in our town. <clears throat> the numbers that um, Stacy talked about is very conservative. And the reason I say that is conservative 
is because it's taken into account of the attendance at the game. Uh, but you all know that the sometimes the attendance outside the game is larger than the attendance inside of the game. So with those visitors that's in and out of town, the numbers would be uh, uh, more higher, but based upon how they plug the information in, that's the number that you're, you're getting. Uh, so John, it's gonna be even better than that, um, <laughs> which I know makes you even happier. Uh, but you know, it's, it's just gonna be a weekend of um, a lot of activity around town, a lot of restaurants, um, should retailers, they ought to be real glad of the the um, the crowd that will be here um, in our town for that particular weekend. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. I want to also add that another little tidbit of history is that uh, the game had been played in New Orleans and it had a lesser figure than 40,000 people. And so having the game in Shreveport in 73, you were absolutely correct, was the launching pad for it to go to the Superdome in 1975. So we're happy about that. And we're excited to see the, the Bayou Classic back in North Louisiana after, what, 40-year hi hiatus? <laughs> At any rate, thank you very much. I will entertain a motion. So move. Second. 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 Okay. So a, there has been properly moved. It's been motioned by... Commissioner Burrell, second by Commissioner Johnson. Oh, Atkins. Atkins can take it. Atkins, uh, second by Commissioner Atkins. Uh, clerk, let's get a roll call vote. Commissioner Cawthorn. Yes. Commissioner Gage Watts. Yes. Commissioner Atkins. Yes. Commissioner Young. Commissioner Burrell. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. All right, that motion carries by five uh, in support and one absent. All right, thank you very much. Now we move to our next agenda item. We have a uh, proposal for the Center for Medical Education and Emerging Viral Threats. Yes, we have with us um, Marquis Pierre and Dr. Chris Kevel, and they will be making a presentation at this point. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Cawthorn. Um, Jeff, we need to share our screen for the presentation. Could you allow us to share our screen? We're getting you ready should, to send the share You request. should have permission. Okay. It says host disabled. It says host disabled. Here, sorry, our, our um, settings have been changed a little bit. Let me see if I can change that back, one sec. Okay. And in the event that it takes us a little longer, if you want, you can send me the file and I can call it up for you as well. Um, but I am trying to change it on the. Yes, okay, hold on a second. Let me forward it to you. I just did. Uh, we just got it. Okay. It's coming from me, Jeff. Great. So it's working now? Yes. Wait. No, no. I just sent you the file, oh, the PowerPoint. Uh, okay. Dr. Keller just forwarded you the PowerPoint. I'll I still can't it. share. Still saying host disabled screen sharing. Did you receive it? I haven't received it yet. There it is. Just came through. Oh, oh great. And Mr. Clerk, while we uh, uh, wait for that to come through, I need to reintroduce the persons here. We have with us Dr. Marquis Pierre and Dr. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also have with me Dr. Suzanne Tinsley, who is our Assistant Vice Chancellor for Institutional Research. She's sitting over here on the other side. You really can't see her, but she's gonna wave oh, into the okay. screen. We're kind of trying to practice a little bit of social distancing here in the office. Um, but once again, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, President Johnson and Dr. Wilson for the opportunity to present a unique opportunity that we believe literally will save lives um, and will create sustainable economic growth for the parish of Caddo. Um, Jeff, could you go ahead and move to the, uh, put it in the, uh, the presentation mode at the bottom? 
Sure, one sec. Let's see. Go down over, 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 one more, one more. There you go, right there. The, there you go. And so the Center for Medical Education and Emerging Viral Threats is more than just a building. It's a specific need to develop sustainable infrastructure in utilizing science and technology in response to COVID-19. And the CMET is what I'm gonna call it and refer to it in CEVT, have really become a part of our DNA in Caddo Parish. And we appreciate our partnerships in the past with Caddo Parish, and we look forward to a more closely developed relationship. So as I say, it's more than just a building. It is the true answer to creating sustainable economic growth and the opportunity to expand our footprint as a national leader in research um, that actually, you know, where these discoveries enhance the lives here in Caddo Parish. And it's truly a pathway for more deserving students to achieve their goal. Because in this process, as we expand and, 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 and build this infrastructure, we are going to expand our medical school class from 150 to 200 students. So let's talk about, next slide please, um, who we are. In Caddo Parish, we are the sixth largest uh, employer with 2007, uh, 2,703 employees. And it just kind of gives you the numbers there. We support over 4,000 region uh, jobs in this particular region. Next slide. We make a huge economic impact here in our region with right at almost $3 billion. Um, when you look at each graduating position, they generate an average of $2 million in economic impact. That's an average of 11.9 jobs. And we are Louisiana, 8.3% of Louisiana's uh, gross state product. Next slide, please. Our Center for Medical Education and Wellness will address the healthcare shortage in Louisiana, as I just shared with you by expanding our class size. Um, enhancing our learning. And I'm not gonna read all of these specific things to you because I think some of you know them. You have been with us. We've made presentations to you uh, in the past, but enhancing our learning and wellness environment to align with our student needs and expectations. Many of you have heard me say that, you know, uh, we got dinged on our accreditation because of our wellness space for our students and opportunity for them to detach and to relax. And as you're going through medical school, there are certain requirements that you get that we have from our accrediting institutions. And having a 24 seven wellness space is important to that and study space. So that's gonna be included within this wellness, within the Center for Medical Education. Also in increasing our competitive edge for recruitment and students and residents and faculty, because we're gonna have state of the art uh, equipment in, these, uh, in this campus. Providing an opportunity for growth and the addition of the new programs. Um, uh, many of you may have heard, we have been talking about the expansion of a dental school and nurse anesthetist program. We have received uh, support from the um, Board of Supervisors for our general practice residency for uh, dentistry, as well as uh, MOU agreement that was just recently approved by the Board of Supervisors expanding the nurse anesthetist program as well as new doctorate programs in the School of Allied Health Professions. And so we're very excited about the growth that we have going on here at this enterprise. And we wanna further positively impact the economy here in North Louisiana. Next slide. Included within this Center for Med Medical Education are these key components here, a huge 500 person auditorium and meeting space, new clinical skills center, um, a two 250 person lecture halls, small group study rooms, um, our Center for Emerging Viral Threats, our Center of Excellence. Um, recently, uh, the Board of Regents approved our uh, Center of Excellence status for emerging viral threats, and we're very excited about this. Um, we are bursting at the seams here at the, at the Health Sciences Center. As you know, our building was built in the 1960s and it is like a, a um, uh, it, it, it protects us as a, from bomb threats. You can't even hardly get a signal in this, in this building. Uh, and so having the opportunity to expand academic affairs as well as medical education offices is really important. 
our on-site uh, IT support and that wellness center as I spoke with you about before. We have an interactive video uh, of the center that we'd like to show you. Let's see if I can click on it and see if it opens. Let's see here. Can you click on that? I forgot. Jeff, to open that. It should be, it's, uh, it's it's playing on my screen, but you know what? I think I'm going to have to share a different screen. Okay, One second. it's not showing for you. Well, it's it's opening. It's just opening in a different um, application. On a, on a different screen, correct. Yeah. So let me open it there, and I will share that screen. Is this the video? Yes. And so if you would just go to the very top, uh, where you see the arrows in the top uh, right-hand side, and just move forward. And this just kind of gives you an idea of what this center uh, is, this, this, in, this institution is going to be looking like. Uh, we wanted to at least give you an idea. You can just kind of keep scrolling, Jeff, or is it moving it by itself? No, I'm, I'm just kind of moving it along. Okay, that's fine. Good improvising here. <laughs> keep going. Part of the wellness center, our large classroom auditorium, excuse me, our assembly rooms. There you go. And we're going to be able to provide this to you after uh, the meeting so that you guys can have a copy of it as well. Fan rooms and meditation space space for our faculty and our clinical skills labs uh, there with the state of the art equipment, training labs, CBT. our CEBT <laughs> here, our BSL2 lab. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment and a little bit of the open lounge. Okay, so if you can go back to the presentation, uh, Jeff, for me. Yeah, I'd like to move into our Center of Excellence for Emerging Viral Threats that is included as a part of this, this, this building. And I'm going to pass that over uh, to Dr. Chris Kevill, who's our Vice Chancellor of Research here at the Health Sciences Center. Uh, and so, Dr. Kevill. Thank you, Marquis. And uh, hello, everybody. It's good to visit with you again. Uh, what I'd like to just take a few moments uh, to, to tell you about how the Center of Emerging Viral Threats is part of this building. As you all know, and, and in fact, you all were uh, instrumental in helping us uh, manage and, and respond to the pandemic. Um, we had a lag period of about a month, month and a half, almost perhaps two months until we really got up to speed to be able to combat the, the virus. Um, we did that with all hands on deck. You guys were huge. We worked together very nicely. And in talking with your pandemic and emergency uh, preparedness subcommittee, one of the things that's critical for us in this region is to have something at the ready that can turn literally on a dime. So this Center for Emerging Viral Threats allows us to do that. So several of you have actually come here and visited the facility. For those of you who have not, there's an open invitation anytime you'd like to come, happy to have you. This CEVT will allow us here in the region to be able to respond to viral threats before they ever become a major issue. So for example, if we had had something like this back then, um, probably within no more than 48 hours, we would have been able to implement testing programs for this virus and um, really would not have had the rise in the percent positivity in the nursing homes that as many of you recall, got as high as 33 to 35%. Um, and more importantly, we don't know what the next pandemic is. So that means that we actually have to do research. So we're collaborating very closely with the LDH, many other different universities, University of Pittsburgh, uh, University of Texas, uh, Galveston, CDC. The reality is we will end up becoming a hub. We will be one of the key sentinel sites on the forefront of, of looking after and, and paying attention to viruses that are, that are out there that threaten us. Um, importantly, you saw some pictures there that um, uh, show what are called BSL-2 and BSL-3 labs. These are biosafety level labs. Biosafety level three uh, is pretty high up there. 
Uh, and in fact, it will allow us to do research and more importantly, allow us to bring in business and commercial activity to the region that you can't get everywhere. So we will further distinguish ourselves as a place to be for infectious disease, not only research, but for commercial development. I think many of you have seen that there's been a lot of commercial interest to develop new therapeutics. Uh, and unfortunately, we, we've done some of that, but we haven't been able to do it as widely as we would have uh, if we'd have had that BSL-3 facility. Um, and then lastly, the thing that's really cri critical and key here is that this also addresses public health education and outreach. This is something that we're seeing now, even with the vaccine rollout, is that making sure that the, the public understands not only what the, the problems or the, 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 shall we say, threats are that are out there, but more importantly, how we can help them, how we can educate them and prepare them so that they can protect themselves and their family. Unfortunately, um, you know, perhaps maybe in not only Louisiana, but the United States as a whole, we haven't uh, paid enough attention to that in the past, but that's certainly an area that we're now rectifying and, and we'll be able to completely address here that really makes Shreveport and Bossier and all of Northwest Louisiana truly a place that people are gonna to wanna to come to because they'll feel secure, they'll have great education facilities, they'll have wonderful high-tech environments where uh, business development can occur and research can occur. So um, with that, I'll turn it back over to Marquis. Thank you, Dr. Kevill. You, know, you speak about the public health research. Many of you may have seen on channel 12 last night on CBS affiliate, uh, Dr. John Van Cherry, who's our lead principal investigator for the Pfizer vaccine trial that occurred here in Shreveport, uh, doing an educational session along with Dr. McGee, uh, from LDH. And those are the thing, types of things that we're coordinating to ensure that the public has the information that they need relative to these types of viruses to, uh, to enhance and be able to make sure that they're making the best decisions for their own health. And so we, have, we, we appreciate these types of partnerships. Jeff, can you move to the next slide, please? So I wanted to share with you the project funding structure uh, because I believe in transparency and how everything works. Um, so when we went to the state a couple of years ago and met with uh, uh, Commissioner Darden and uh, Governor Edwards, um, they structured this funding, this proposal with the excitement of that it would be half and half. And so the state would put up half and then we would be responsible for raising the other half from private uh, slash local federal sources. And so um, the state has actually come up with a little bit more than half. And so the state contribution for the 72 million uh, to date has been $41.6 million. Um, we have local and federal contributions listed at 12 and a half, which is about 18%. And then additional private contributions from our uh, philanthropic arm of about 17.5 million, which is right at about 24%. Next slide, please. Our timeline on this project in working with the state and facilities management um, is that we are looking at anticipated construction start date of sometime in April. We understand that that could slide to maybe mid-April, I mean, mid-April, beginning of May, uh, but we're working very, very closely with Mark Moses on this and about to sign those construction documents uh, in the coming weeks. And our project, uh, potential project completion date is September the 30th, 2023. So now I want to get to where, why we're actually here. Next slide. Ah, oh, that's the wrong one. Okay, so uh, I think we need to send them the one that has all of this information because I need oh. it. So Jeff, we're going to send you another um uh, another uh, presentation real quick and let you put this up while I speak on this. I sent that one to you, the last one, uh, Dr. Kevill. Uh, and our, our uh, request is to partner with LSU uh, Health Report and the parish uh, to develop transformational center for medical education and emerging viral threats to fuel the sustainable economic growth for the parish of Caddo. You and so it. we are requesting $1 million over three oh, years okay. And we are about to send a, another presentation that has these, um, the opportunities that are on there because I'd like for you to see um, the areas that we would like to be able to share with you. So just give us a quick second. We've had some technology difficulties here. No, no, no technical and, uh, difficulties. Just trying to get you the right file. Just give you the so right Jeff, file. So Jeff, remind me of your email address again. J 
Jay Everson at Cato.org. Jay Everson. All right. Coming to you right now. All right. I'm on. Coming from Dr. Tinsley's email address. So you should be receiving it. So as we are going through this, and we're going to show you a few naming opportunities that I thought would be important for you to actually see um, the value of where uh, the parish of Caddo's name would be. Um, we'd be happy to answer a few questions uh, for you while we're working to get this last presentation up. Jeff, did you get it? I've not received it yet. I'm, I'm refreshing it, but I haven't gotten it yet. Okay. It takes it's, a minute. it's taken a second to just get to you. Sounds like it popped up. I hear your. Unfortunately, that was another email. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> At least we know my email is working, so I should <laughs> it momentarily. Commissioner Carlton, can I ask a question while we wait? You're, you're muted, but it looked like your lips said you sure may. That's what I have from you. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dr. Wilson, um, where would you envision this money would come from if we were to, if the commission were to approve this, this, this contribution? Would you envision it would, it comes out of the um, well, economic development fund or would it be the, our, our reserve funds? Probably the oil and gas fund. Okay, and what's the balance of the oil and gas fund right now? Okay, just a minute, please. Ms. Haley, what's the balance? It's about... Ms. Haley? Oh, sorry. Come on. It takes a second. Uh, good afternoon. The balance, let me get you the exact balance. At the end of 2000 and... Um, 20. It's, it's like 6.4 million right now. Okay, thank you. Haley, why are you there? What's the balance in the journal for? Balance in the general fund um, is uh, 18.2. And if if it's appropriate, I'll let y'all know I have received it and I'm ready to share it when you're. Okay, ready. Jeff, if you could get to uh, the slide that has um, request of Cattle Parish Commission and pull it up for me. Will do. I think I found it right now. Perfect. And let me get it back in. There we are in presentation mode. And there we go. Okay, and so if you would move to the, the next slide right after that. And so this is our one of our biosafety training labs that we wanted to show you um, that could be the Parish of Caddo's biosafety and training lab. Move to the next one. Wanted to show you just kind of where these biosafety labs are uh, in the building, in the location of that. We can move to the next one, that opportunity for the um, large assembly hall. Um, and honestly, for this particular uh, naming opportunity, an opportunity to even train some of the parish employees. Uh, we could work on you know, how the structure of this works, but I think that this would be a great also opportunity to partner um, and to utilize this facility. Next uh, screen. And this last one is the, uh, the weight training, the wellness area. And I'm gonna allow uh, Dr. Tinsley to make a few comments on what happens in these areas relative to the community. Dr. Tinsley. Good afternoon, gentlemen and ladies. Um, th this area, though it will meet the requirement that our university has from our accrediting body to meet the wellness and health needs of our students. We also envision um, many areas associated with the wellness areas working in community projects. We recently um, promoted an individual to the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Institutional Wellness and part of her responsibilities is community initiatives. So we now have two faculty members on campus, Dr. Marie Vasquez Morgan and Dr. Jennifer Singh who are both heavily involved in community activity, wellness, nutrition. And although this area will not be utilized up front initially for um, fitness for the community, there are many community projects and initiatives that will utilize this area to promote wellness and health um, in our region. 
Thank you, Dr. Tinsley. Uh, Jeff, could you go to the next slide, which just kind of gives you an, uh, an idea of where the assembly hall is located and the, the size of it along with where the uh, wellness area is. And so uh, you can uh, go to the next slide, which is where we are with the uh, question and answer moment. So we're happy to take any additional questions at this time and look forward to a great long lasting partnership with the parish of Caddo uh, in moving this, uh, this project forward and creating a huge sustainable economy here for the parish of Caddo. Thank you very much, Dr. Pierre. Oh, uh, I think uh, Commissioner Burrell had his hand up prior to. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I, I, only had, I only had a couple of questions, and one of them I think I maybe just got answered. I was trying to picture where this facility or where this building was going to be because at first I was confusing it with the, the, the CMIT or CMIT building, which is further down Kings Highway. Um, but uh, this is this is a whole separate uh, building itself. Now, will this building be uh, adjacent to the the core campus uh, right near BFI and, and LSU, or is is it away from from the, the, the core area? It is. It is on the it is on the campus um, directly. I'm not sure if you recall, we had a center for um, the disabled students that we, we, we had, it was an old church that we renovated just directly, uh, in front of the BRF building in, in that particular area. That's where the location is. I don't know if you recall where that was. We, on our tour, we kind of showed you where it was. It was kind of through the window, but in that yeah, circle I I, area where you come through directly adjacent to that okay, on yeah. the campus. I think I remember that now we looked through the window. Uh, my second question is on the funding. Uh, will the will the new uh, legislation that's, that's being being passed uh, uh, on a national level, or should I say, through Congress, uh, is there an opportunity there to get any additional funding there uh, that will yes, sir. affect these numbers? Yes. yes, sir. So, if you look at when on the project funding structure, when I had on their local and federal contributions of $12.5 million. We have several applications uh, that are out and we are working very closely with our congressional delegation uh, to address some of the needs that we have here as well. Is that, is, uh, is that included in these numbers here or? Yes, sir, in the numbers that I just showed you, shared with you, yes, sir. Okay, all right, the last question I have uh, here, let's see, since we're since we're increasing the educational footprint, uh, are we going to retrofit the existing bomb shelter that you were talking about into something else? Uh, no, sir. We, we're, we're expanding uh, because we have almost no space right now to meet the, the current needs that we have. Okay, so yeah, you're, just, you, you're just adding to the space and you're not take it away. I mean, taking the old structure and I mean, taking no. what's in the old facility and moving it over to the no, new. Sir. No, sir. No, sir. To be clear, we are, and I think you all have heard this before, we are in a very unique and, and quite frankly, uh, envious position of growing uh, here, not only research-wise, but education-wise, uh, that nationwide is not happening, really. I mean, we, we are growing very handily and bringing in faculty from across the US and wonderful institutions. And the, the building, the bomb shelter, as you were saying, <laughs> will be utilized. <laughs> it won't be so, uh, so bomb shelter-ish, <laughs> but it will certainly be utilized because we're going to actually increase the number of jobs and the number of faculty coming to the campus. Well, one of the reasons why I was asking is um, with our affiliation or association with, with LSU, I know that they just expanded to the old Shumpert uh, facility over there. And I wonder if we were utilizing that too. Right, that's a good question. Um, that is being utilized for other purposes, but not for the, the aspects of what this building is, is meant for. Uh, and and those, per those facilities over at the old Shumpert uh, location are primarily for clinical. Right, oh, and this is a more expansion of the research and the educational component. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell. Uh, I see uh, 
Commissioner Atkins has his hand up. That's the second second line of questions, or that was from the original line. Second, you don't mute. You mute it. Yeah, I'm good. I'd like to ask another set of okay. questions if I may. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess following up on Commissioner Burrell's question regarding federal funding, uh, Dr. W Dr. Wilson, I guess this is directed towards you. I mean, well, is there a possibility that we would receive additional coronavirus related funding that, that we could then channel from the feds that we could then channel over this way that, that would not be in the federal compo component of uh, Dr. Pierre uh, presentation, but would be, you know, coming from the parish? Uh, yes, sir. We believe we, we will more than likely get some more funding for COVID relief and, and, and to cover our expenditures. And it could very well, it may be able to fit into that category. We'll have to see when we get the legislation in hands. Okay. But we are expected to get more money. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I had another question that's um, escaping me currently. Hopefully it'll come back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll step down now. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Atkins, are there any other questions? Okay, Commissioner Johnson. I was gonna make the motion um, to bring before the, the full body um, a funding LSU of $1 million over three years. Second, second. They're, they're second before me. Yeah, I me. Mean. All right. So it's been probably moved second for the funding of $1 million to LSU Health Sciences in the amount of a million dollars over a three year period of time, moved by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Burrell. Mr. Clerk, can we get a roll call vote? Commissioner Coffin. Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Is, is, that, is that funny beginning in um, 2022, sir? Uh, when? Uh, it's based upon LSU's need. Is it this year? Uh, Dr. Pierre, or, or in 2022? Uh, so it, it would be nice if uh, we could start the first 333,000 in 2021. Uh, but, you know, we appreciate the partnership for the parish and we'll work at the will of the parish and what best fits your financial needs because the partnership is extremely important to us. Can I ask you a question, Dr. Wilson? Yes, sir, it does. Thank you. Okay. Okay, are we ready for that roll call vote? Yes, sir. Okay, Commissioner Cawthorn? Yes. Commissioner Gage Watts? Um, Commissioner Gage Watts, I didn't hear you if you. Um, Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Young? Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. All right, that motion passes with four in support and two absent. And, and before- Mr. Dr. Chairman, Pierre, may I, Dr. go ahead. May I ask Dr. that Dr. question that, that, I, that, that didn't, that, that left my mind previously? Okay, um, go ahead. Uh, Dr. Pierre or Dr. Kevill, I'm, I'm sure you all have run numerous economic impact analyses on this. Can you all just brief us on those numbers? Of course, we've already voted to move it to the full body, but it'd be nice to know those numbers going into that discussion. Yeah, so so in terms of economic impact, uh, the reality is with faculty that come in, uh, we'll be able to put a minimum of 14 faculty there at the tune of salaries starting at 150,000. Uh, and then their research dollars that go up to each individual in the neighborhood of about 1.2 to 1.4 million. So that's just them coming alone. So you're already from right out the gate with the CEVT looking at 14 million. When you take into account the additional research dollars that can come down from the feds, we're anticipating that being somewhere in the neighborhood of another 10 million. So within the first, I would say 18 to 24 months, uh, the, the hope is it will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 24 to 25 million additional impact directly just from the CEVT. And that's not taking into account the students or the faculty that are coming for the med school. Or the construction costs. Or the construction costs. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. And so that's, it. that's in addition to the initial $600 million impact that we already currently have. Right. 
And, and, and if I may, the one thing, and, and Commissioner Burrell was bringing this point up, what will happen because we literally are bursting at the seams is this will allow expansion and we will then be able to fill back into the other buildings. So this is really exciting. I know I sound like a scratch record because this is going to feed forward and it'll feed forward very quickly. And um, with our new cancer center director, as I think some of you have heard, and I think you guys would really love to meet her at a separate time, there's going to be growth in the cancer research area as well. And, and we know that viruses contribute to tumor development, so we anticipate growth there also. All right, before you guys leave, Dr. Pierre, Dr. Kev, I wanna publicly say to you guys, we wanna appreciate you guys for the visionary uh, processes that you guys are taking place over at LSU. Uh, any place where there's some, some vision, there's some forward planning, and great things happen. So I'm hopeful that what you guys are attempting to do at LSU has an end result that mirrors what happened at UT Arlington and uh, UBA Birmingham. So best and, wishes. And let me say this, uh, Commissioner Cawthorn, I would be remiss if I, if I didn't acknowledge that the vision came from our chancellor, Dr. G. Gali. Uh, and okay. he apologizes for his inability to be here today, but he's in another partnership meeting with the VA. Uh, and so okay. we kind of pitch hit for one another uh, around here. But uh, it was his vision when he came on board for the expansion and the growth of this institution. And we appreciate the vision that he has set forth. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, another question. Commissioner Burrell, I'm sorry. I thought yeah, your hand was just still up. I'm sorry. No, I, I, I taken it down. I put it back up. Uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, commend um, uh, Dr. Marquis. Uh, I call him Miss Hollywood. <laughs> um, over there for being a part of, of, of the system as well as Dr. Uh, Kevel. Uh, as you know, my son graduated from there, so I've, yes, I've uh, worked with them for some time. And I know Dr. McDonald, uh, the late Dr. McDonald, would be very proud uh, of what, you know, what has taken place uh, since he was there as chancellor. So um, uh, I, the question that I do have is, given the fact that you are expanding your student capacity now, how does that rank uh, Shreveport in terms of medical facility? Because that can be a drawing card for our area. Yeah, no, that's a great question, Commissioner Burrell. And, and let me also echo uh, the, the appreciation from Dr. Pierre. You, you all have been phenomenal. It's been a wonderful partnership. And and certainly we couldn't do it without you. And so what, what Commissioner Carthon was saying about UT and about UAB, having trained at UAB, I can tell you we are on that trajectory. Um, it's impossible to tell you what that looks like moving forward, but this is the one instrumental first step for that. And I do see us being not only a regional uh, site for medical technology, biomedical research and, and training, but it's becoming rapidly apparent that we're also emerging on the national stage. And, and I'll just give you one small example of that. Uh, Dr. Gale and myself both uh, were uh, part of a Zoom call with only 23 medical schools or academic medical centers in the nation, which there's well over 140, talking about genomic sequencing uh, of the virus. And that's huge because we discovered a variant here at LSU and Shreveport that has made a difference nationwide. So we're now on the map and it's, uh, it's exciting and it means that we have to continue pushing the, the envelope and, and you'll see more developments in that regard. And, and, and let me just add to that, uh, Commissioner Burrell, you know, we talk a lot about the expansion of the class of the School of Medicine, it, but I want everyone to recall that the LSU Health Sciences Center is comprised of three professional schools, not only just the School of Medicine, but the School of Allied Health and the School of Graduate Studies that Dr. Kevel leads. This also enables us an opportunity to expand those class sizes mm -hmm. in allied health professions, in PT, OT, and PA programs that are in such demand, as well as in graduate studies, in biomedical research careers, and in precision medicine. And so this, this the, 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 the wraparound effect of this particular project has just so it's so far reaching and great opportunities for us to grow a sustainable economy here in this area that we are very, very excited about. Well, we're glad to have you in District 5. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I think everybody thing. claims us Commissioner Burrell. <laughs> I, I, I know we have a tendency to be territorial. That's the reason I threw it out to my other colleagues. Uh, uh, but they welcome to, they, they're working to come to my district and work at it any time. I don't have a problem. I love it. <laughs> As they say in Canada, we are one. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you all for your support. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Right. We, we can move to our next agenda item. Hey, the next item is the uh, Inferno ITEP application discussion. If, if, if you want to get the caller back on the line because they wanted to speak to this yes, agenda. We did uh, have a caller agenda. who indicated okay. they were going to call back, and um, but we have not received that call back yet. So um, so it, I think you can proceed just as you norm you were anticipating to. Okay. Dr. Wilson, you want to you want to take this one? Uh, yes, sir, I would. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners again. Uh, I sent you all a copy of uh, Inferno Manufacturing uh, ITEP application that was voted on by the uh, Commerce and Industry Board on uh, February the 24th. And uh, every time we get an advanced application, we have 30 days to act on it. And Mr. Uh, Allen Organic from uh, Inferno Manufacturing is uh, coming to us again for another opportunity. He's going to expand his manufacturing base. He's Mr. going to- Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I think, yes, I think be before would it continue, I think I asked you, uh, since I'm not totally familiar with ITAP, okay. you said that you, that you were going to kind of give, give me a little insight. Maybe Woody can do that. Yes, sir. Um, uh, yes, sir, I can. Um, the ITAP program is one of the many tools in the arsenal of the economic development sphere in the state of Louisiana to enhance business opportunity and encourage uh, expansion of, of existing businesses as well as recruiting new businesses. It could be used for expanding the manufacturing production by way of adding more equipment. And it could also be used to build uh, uh, plants from the ground up. And we normally look at the number of jobs being created and the amount of money is being invested. So the state, this is a state program. And so the parish responsibility in it is to give us either uh, okay uh, con concurrence or non-concurrence on the fact that that they would allow this exemption to take place. And what Mr. Inferno is, is investing is two hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars of any new manufacturing equipment, and he's going to hire two new employees at annual payroll of a hundred thousand dollars. We uh, I think a couple of years ago we did approve a similar application for Mr. Organic. And uh, the administration is recommending that we approve this one. So again, the ITAP is just an industrial tax credit exemption program that's embodied in the state legislation that gives the state the authorization to abate property taxes on, on a proposed business that want to come to our area or an existing business that want to expand its infrastructure. Uh, manufacturing. So it's an, abate, it's an abatement and credit program. Sir, it's a property tax abatement. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, thank you. Isn't it, in, in it like twenty five thousand a year for ten years, Doctor Wilson? Uh, yes, yes, sir. It's but it's twenty five thousand dollars for the first five years, and if it goes ten years, it's forty thousand, forty nine thousand eight hundred seventy two dollars. So I would say uh, versus what Mr. Organic is investing in it, uh, I would say this is well worth uh, our approval, and also uh, let's be mindful it had nothing to do with this application process. But Mr. Organic was the gentleman who invested $125,000 of his own money uh, into effort to do COVID testing parish-wide in 2020 and 20. So, you know, the parish put up $175,000 and he invested $125,000 in his personal funds. So you can see Mr. Organic is, is, is giving back far more than he's receiving from us. Absolutely, absolutely. Commissioner Johnson. You're muted, Lyndon. I'm sorry about that. I'd like to make a motion to move uh, to the full body the recommendation of approval of the ITIP application of Inferno. Second. Second. Okay. All right, it's been properly moved and second, moved by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Ackers to move to the full body at the application for Inferno Manufacturing. With the recommendation of approval from the committee and the administration. Okay. 
with that last piece that Commissioner Johnson added. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Commission Clerk, uh, roll call vote. Okay, Commissioner uh, Cawthorn. Yes. Commissioner Gage Watts. Commissioner Atkins. Yes. Commissioner uh, Young. Commissioner Burrell. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. All right, that motion carries with uh, four in support and two absent. Okay. And, and so that, uh, just to confirm, that caller did call back as right after we mentioned that last time. So uh, if you did want to hear from them, they are on the line. Right, go ahead, put them on the line. Okay. Michelle, can you connect the caller? Hello. Oh, hold on one second. I'm going to put you on speakerphone. You'll have to state your name for the record, and then you'll have three minutes. Okay. Uh, John Settle, Portillo Wood. Y'all have already, uh, uh, I was just John Settle, Portillo Wood. John Settle, Portillo Wood. Y'all have already uh, approved the ITAP, but I was just going to uh, recommend that. This I was just John Settle, Portillo Wood. Y'all have already uh, Michelle, we're having ITAP, trouble just, hearing his connection. Mr. Settle, if you can mute your other device. Um, that way you don't have to uh, hang up. I think he disconnected the call. What was the essence of it? <laughs> I, I, if I heard correctly, and and the reason it was hard to hear, it sounds like there was maybe some feedback, like he had the video playing while he was on the phone and that was causing some feedback. But what I could hear through it, I believe he was speaking in support of the ITEP application. Oh, okay. That's it? We will move for adjournment. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I just point out one yes, thing? Sir. It's interesting to note that there are five of us on the call and we all agreed on all issues. So, you know, sometimes we can all work together towards common goals. Fortunately, these By are all- Bipartisanship. Bipartisanship. <laughs> That's going to be a trend, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, brother. Yes, it is, brother. There you go. It, well, it was, it, was e it was easy on these because they were all they were all good projects. So thank you. Thank right. you for your leadership on this on this uh, agenda, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. Is there anything else before this committee? All right. Oh, to adjourn. Second. See you guys next week. <laughs>